Good day, citizens of the future. Citizen of the future here, and welcome back to edition number six for the Lighthouse Report. Um, this is an exciting one. I'm going to change it up a little bit, shift from uh, traditional finance and paperless trade to the transformation and advancement of the world's public social media infrastructure. And I'm going to target specifically the, the, the recent events of Elon Musk acquiring Twitter and sort of just blend in some of his previous envisionment um, of x.com and just to give some insights of what I found and where I think we're going with this uh, Twitter acquisition. So the whole reason I wanted to talk about this subject is because there's not a lot of information or real factual information on Elon Musk's um, vision for X.com. So if you guys didn't know, he owns he's owned uh, X.com since I think the early 2000s. And uh, so that was before the PayPal merger and eBay merger and all that way back in the day. So what I did is, uh, you know, looking at all the, the mainstream news articles, these are snippets from different things around this topic. There's a very negative outlook on Elon from the mainstream media. And this got me thinking, you know, I've always done the opposite of the mainstream media because they have a narrative and they don't like change. So here they are all attacking him. Elon Musk is blowing up Twitter's business. Why Elon Musk's quest to revive Twitter is likely to fail, the Wall Street Journal. Is there an end of Twitter? Staff exodus has some fearing, etc., etc., by the CBC News. After Elon's antics on Twitter, advertisers may think twice. Elon Musk pleads with advisors to stay on Twitter. And this is from CNN. So, so this was what inspired me to dig deeper and to try and dig up some information for all you citizens out there that like forward thinking and that like this deep thought stuff. So I did. I dedicated five hours to digging through uh, the backlinks of X.com. So here we are. The backlinks of X.com. So even if you go to his website, X.com, you get nothing but an X. That's it. There's nothing here. But the thing is, with backlinks, you get to see who's mentioning what, why, and how. So what I did is he's got 2.1 million backlinks on X.com. And as you can see, this is from the early 2000s, and it even goes back to... 2012 and 2013 and 2010 um, but his site was first really taken offline in June 2016 so in about 2016 it was offline and then uh, it started back up between 2018 and then it just died for since until now now we're starting to get uh, some activity again for traffic just people checking it out so what I did is I went through about 25,000 links, that's all I had time for, I set aside and I found some of the most interesting articles because it was a blast from the past. These links went back to 2012 and 2012 and these were some of the things that I got to pick up and which I will cover here. So some very interesting verbiage, just one second here, some very interesting verbiage and I think you all are going to find very interesting how he was all put together and just, you know, Elon Musk nowadays says he only knows Bitcoin, Ethereum and Dogecoin. But he's playing stupid. He's a very smart guy, very intellectual. And very, very, very interesting. Um, because these some of these headlines, the future of commerce will combine your social media network and mobile device. If those two powerful phenomenons merge, we will discover a new payments utopia. This was in 2012 by a guy named Nick Hughes, working with uh, X.com. And so I'm going to quickly just cover some of these titles. I'm not going to get into the beef of these articles. So here's a snippet of some of these articles, just to give you guys of what it used to look like, what their conversations were like in 2012. This is 10 years ago. And now imagine this, right? We're now 10 years in the future from these days. And Elon Musk just made some massive moves. So let's just quickly cover. These are out of about eight different articles. The future of commerce will combine your social network and mobile device. If those two powerful 
phenomenons merge, we'll discover new payments utopia. How Facebook could transform the mobile commerce market. And with that, they talk about um, Facebook connecting almost a billion people around the world. And with about, uh, where was it? I think it was about 500 million daily users right here. So there's about 1 billion in active users monthly and then 552 million daily active users. And so I did my research and guess what? In 2022, we are at 3 billion monthly users and 2 billion daily users of Facebook. So that's a 3x of monthly users, almost half the population, and then a 4x of daily active users in 10 years. So now picture 10 years from now where my citizen of the future account exists. How many, is it going to be the whole world on Facebook and Twitter using social media for uh, conversations and other things? That's a question that I'm going to leave with you guys. How cryptocurrencies transform money. The future of money is the web. The future of finance is the web toward national cryptocurrencies. The standard open ID integration for PayPal access. So PayPal, X.com, work interconnectedly with OpenID and the W3C, the, the open web payment standards in the new economy. They talk about the benefits of, of a trustworthy cryptocurrency. What does it need to have? It's got to be an open protocol. It's got to be anonymous, extremely counterfeit resistance, protection from theft, multi-point authentication, efficient and resilient. Damn. I know some of those. I know some, some networks that meet those standards. And this one was a very interesting choice of words. How Ripple networks are transforming money. And this actually happened two months before the, the XRP ledger uh, started. So very, very interesting that they're talking about Ripple networks. So let's just quickly get into this. Um, that's the quick ver stuff. So now I'm just going to cover some of these articles and just read the, some more of the, the snippets. How Ripple networks are transforming money. They're, they're talking about direct trust networks. We utilize many levels of trust in our current markets-based economy, period. We trust that the currency is stable. We trust that the banks will be able to store and retrieve our funds when we need them. We trust the issuing government truly can and will back the value of the currency. We trust the market prices to be fair. And we also trust that we will receive that what of which we paid. We trust that if an item is defective and the merchant fails to replace it or refund our money, we will have recourse under the nation's laws. And it's a very deep network of relationships of trust that permeates the transactions we make each and every day. So what else does it talk about? A brief foray into web security you guys can read that talking about the SSLs uh, and then the transport layer security. Um, it talks about digital signatures. And uh, right here it says, this is the basis for taking us further than we are today from direct trust and delegated trust to a hybrid direct delegated trust network. This type of network is called a Ripple Trust Network. Ripple Trust Networks. Ripple Trust Networks are fascinating in that they merge the best of the direct trust and delegated trust networks. If you recall, a direct trust network is beneficial. Uh, there are typically no v fees involved and very little transactional risk because you are transacting with your friends and family. A delegated trust network is beneficial because it allows you to safely conduct business with strangers with safeguards in place that ensure that the stranger follows through with the transaction. Ripple Trust Networks combine the best of both worlds. The new technology that makes this possible is the social web. And this is just giving an example, which you guys can read. And then it says, now for the Ripple part of the Ripple Trust Network, exchanging money in the above scenario with your friends is, is still a direct trust network. You loan your friend money and he pays you back using PayPal, a bank transfer, or some other form of payment. However, what happens if the friend of your friend wants a loan? 
You don't trust that person directly, but your friend does. That's not good enough in the real world. And the same holds true in a Ripple network. In a Ripple network, if you make a loan of a friend and your closest friend is one of the vouchers for the loan and is responsible paying it back to you, a similar arrangement made between your friend and his friend, this means that all of your loans are kept among the closest friends and limits your, uh, that you're comfortable with maintaining. So Ripple tr trust networks in practice. This just gives an example, blah, 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 talking about loans and that, but here we go. There is uh, quite a bit of a mathemat mathematical hoop jumping into decentralized Ripple networks, but the idea is sound and implementable. In fact, it is all, there is already a centralized live implementation of this concept, transacting real money. If the idea still seems uh, esoteric to you, Think about the $1.5 trillion a year flowing through the credit card networks. That $1.5 trillion of economic activity is something that Ripple networks can supplement or maybe even one day replace. Ripple networks would produce short-term loan rates that would be more able to compete with current credit card companies, significantly less costly for customers and far less risky for everyone involved, resulting in a much higher repayment rates. The use of Ripple Network concept in a decentralized setting would shift tens of billions of dollars in profit from credit card companies to individuals. It would also uh, reduce the cost of short-term loans by providing a highly competitive market in which to request and receive lines of credit. This is the power of the web, people-powered finance through the Ripple Networks and decentralized payments. In this next article, we'll get into how cryptocurrencies may complement and even replace the US dollar, uh, won, euro, and the yen. Wow, this is from 2012. And this was a, two months before XRP came into existence. So, very, very crazy. Now, here's that one talking about how Facebook could transform the mobile commerce market. Combine a user ID with a mobile device ID and connect a secure payment credential and now you have a quick checkout, online or offline. Now convert, now change Facebook into Twitter and that is where we are at today. Elon Musk just bought Twitter and they have applied for a money license. So, big shifts are coming. This is another article. Here's the How Cryptocurrencies Transform Money talking about fiat, talking about how the, the government is just, there is no more gold supply. There's nothing backing fiat. It's literally an, uh, a worthless IOU given to the government, and we are supposed to trust that they can one day repay all this money they printed out of thin air. So they talk about a trustworthy cryptocurrency, which I've already broke down earlier, and it's just, here we go, towards national cryptocurrencies. So I gotta keep this short, but please, if you're gonna use this, re share this report and say this is where you got it from because I'm digging up. I spent I spent over 10 hours creating this content, digging through backlinks from years ago, over 10 years ago. This stuff hasn't retouched the surface of the internet for over 10 years. And here it is, the future of money is the web. Open payment standards and the new economy. The, Standard open ID integration for PayPal access. This is just just showing you what eco, what X commerce used to look like So big things to come be ready expect the unexpected and Keep learning because there's so much buried Huh ripple Whoa, I've never seen this. Ripple Pay is a banker connect your friends. Huh, I've never, this is the first time I've seen this. Ripple Pay. Holy shit. Citizens, we just found, wow. I'm, I'm, I just can't even believe what we just found. Right here is the original. Just did a backlink check here. 
Ripple Labs. This is the original Ripple. So here at the end, at the end of this god darn thing from Manu Sporny, who works with the W3C on digital identities, etc., etc., at the bottom of this, as the example of the concept of what I just read, brings you to Ripple Pay's original vision. Wow. A moment through time that we need to document. This is going to blow up. And if it doesn't, well, people just don't even care. Wow. Like, look at this, citizens. This link right here has only 4,000 users. With 1,400 accounts, 4,500 payments. This is back in the day. This is the OG. So this is in 2013. So what else? I did a little bit more digging before I move on here. Found this one from 2007. Literally 2007. Two years before Bitcoin came out. And here we are. There's Ripple Pay. Whoa. Where are we at? 10 years fast forward. Ripple.com. XRP. The global liquidity hub. <laughs> that the SEC is calling a security. Well, it's not a security, it's a digital asset. And here we go. Moment through time from a citizen of the future in the Genfinity Lighthouse Report. So if you guys get something from this, make sure you share the report and you share where you found it to bring awareness to our research capabilities. Cheers. What does this mean? What does this mean? We have ties to X.com, X.com, Twitter, Elon's original vision, talking about how Ripple networks are transforming money. And then it lists Ripple, the original Ripple. Ryan Fruger himself can be found at, blo at classicripplepay.com. And then this was passed to Jen McCaleb. <laughs> Whoa. And this, citizens, is how you piece together what you call backlinks and how you connect websites to other websites. I pay $300 a month for this program and I just whipped it out to show you guys. I didn't even notice that when I first went over all that. Wow. So, where are we heading? Here's a video to show where Twitter is heading. There's there's a product plan I wrote, which I wish I'd kept a copy of in July of 2000, where I thought it would be possible to make the most valuable financial institution in the world. And we're, we're going to execute that plan from 22 years ago, which amazingly no one has done. And, and so I, I think that's part of why I think Twitter will be ultimately extremely valuable, because I'm going to execute the X.com game plan from 22 years ago um, with some improvements. Um, and, um, and then we're also gonna obviously make Twitter just a way better system. Um, wow, he's, in, he's, he's working out the X.com original vision, combining social media with payments. They've applied for a money license a couple days after acquiring Twitter. We are heading for a level playing field town hall that integrates payments and freedom of speech. We can use our Twitter that's attached to a digital ID verified by a license or by a piece of identification that then you can integrate with your bank account or your credit card. So you know what? I can envision Twitter having, you know, paywalls where content creators can create a paywall, unlock for 50 cents. It's all connected. Finance, data, holy smokes, citizens. We have found, we have uncovered where we are heading. So the last things I want to leave you with is a visual that I created to show you my vision and what I see. Here it is, citizens of the future, where we are heading. The bird is free. Freedom of speech is here to come and payments are going to be integrated because we are going to have access to a social media platform where we're not going to get censored, where we can have our opinions and we can make payments. So I wouldn't be surprised if he integrates the real utility assets built on DLT 
XDC Network, Hedera, XRP, Constellation, Algorand, you know, Ethereum, Dogecoin, Bitcoin, for the mainstream folk. And here we are, a new horizon. Those mainstream media outlets, they're pissed because they don't like having the citizens to be able to have a, an equal playing field for their voice. They like manipulating the narrative to keep us in the past. I think Elon might bring us to the future. I, I god darn hope so. And citizens, so if you get something from this, uh, you know, leave some feedback. Share it. And let's get this word, word out there because nobody's talking about this and we have the evidence. So I hope you enjoyed my Lighthouse Report edition number six right up. And uh, please leave feedback. Cheers. Citizen of the Future out.